Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to my uh, fifth lecture on Tintin in Tibet and uh, I was uh, actually talking about how Tintin in Tibet is a deep personal narrative and now uh, in this particular lecture I will discuss how Tintin in Tibet differs from other Tintin comic albums and why it is a very deeply personal and almost an autobiographical narrative on the part of the Harje. So by the time Harje concluded the raid she sharks, Harje's uh, private life was in deep turmoil. Uh, if you don't know, I must inform you that his marriage and his state of mind were at the breaking point. The relentless demands imposed by Tintin and the marriage which after 26 years had gone cold left him feeling hopelessly shackled and unable to continue. So the problems, personal problems with his wife uh, were at the uh, most high point uh, in this time when Tintin in Tibet published. The malice uh, took the form of a gruesome nightmare where everything became enveloped in overpowering, screaming white. Uh, Harje himself confessed that at the time I was going through a real crisis and my dreams were nearly always white dreams. So white symbolizes here uh, almost a kind of a gruesome cruelty, nightmare, white symbolizes here death and they were extremely distressing. I took note of them and remember one where I was in a kind of tower made up of a series of ramps. Dead leaf leaves were falling and covering everything. Uh, in fact, uh, the entire graphic narrative of the Tintin in Tibet also appears to be a very dreamy narrative and there are various dream sequences uh, which I will show you later on when uh, we will read the text along. And Harje later related to uh, uh, Numa Sadol that at a particular moment in an uh, immaculately white alcove, a white skeleton appeared that tried to catch me. And then instantly everything around me became white. Harje was shattered. Uh, in fact, another critic uh, called this particular text as Harje's quote unquote white mythology. So the color white actually become an external manifestation of the deep personal trauma uh, 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 which Harje, uh, uh, through which Harje is going through. This is uh, the picture of the Himalayas. Harje amassed a collection of clippings and used pictures similar to this image of the Tibetan landscape as inspiration for his mountainscape drawings. Now let us uh, discuss a bit about uh, in detail regarding the background of the story. So as I was saying that Harje reached a particularly traumatic period in his life and suffered a mental breakdown. In 1956 he realized that he had fallen out of love with his wife Germaine whom he had married in 1932 and by 1958 he and Fanny Vlaminck they uh, have developed relationship. Fanny Vlaminck was a colorist at the studios Harje, who was 28 years uh, younger than Harje. They had developed a deep mutual attraction with one another. So they began coating and Harje's new companion lifted his morale and shared many of his interests. German soon began interfering with, his, with the courtship, causing Harje to admit his desire had been to maintain a relationship with both women. When he failed to please either, he began to contemplate divorcing Jarmen to marry Fanny. Uh, and his Catholic upbringing and Boy Scout ethic, however, uh, caused him to feel tremendous guilt. So as he later related to interviewer uh, Numa Sadal that it meant turning upside down all my values. What a shock. This was a serious moral crisis. I was married and I loved someone else. Life seemed impossible with my wife. But on the other hand, I had this scout-like idea of giving my word forever. It was a real catastrophe. I was completely torn up. So these words from Harje becomes 
uh, very important in the context of uh, Tintin in Tibet because we can really see a kind of tremendous uh, moral guilt and moral uh, conflict between uh, Hadre's uh, boy scout ethics and at the same time uh, 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 he is feeling a kind of uh, uh, a kind of responsibility uh, uh, for his wife. So this kind of conflict between his boy scout ethic ethics and uh, a marriage without any form of love actually created a deep personal nightmare in Harje. During this period, Harje had recurrent nightmares where he faced images of what he described as the beauty and cruelty of white. Visions of white and snow that he could not explain. As he later told Sadal that at the time, I was going through a time of real crisis and my dreams were nearly always white dreams and they were extremely distressing. I took note of them and remember one where I was in a kind of tower made up of a series of ramps. Dead leaves were falling and covering everything. So it's a very uh, nightmarish dream at a particular moment in an immaculately white alcove. A white skeleton appeared that tried to catch me and then instantly everything around me became white. So this is the color of white uh, is almost a, a, a color of trauma. It's almost a color that returns uh, uh, recurrently, that returns in a haunting manner in Harge's dream. So this personal psychological crisis plays a very important part in Harge's graphic narrative. You can see uh, this particular uh, comic panel where Harge is saying, Chang, my dear friend Chang, we shall never see him again, never again. So uh, this deep longing of Harje for his uh, Tintin, for his friend, uh, can be treated as an autobiographical expression on the part of the Harje himself. The dreams were so persistent and obsessive that Harje decided to turn to psychoanalysis for a solution. He actually concerned a clinical psychologist for a solution. He went for counseling. I went to see a Swiss doctor. His name was Professor Riklin, a pupil and follower of Gustav Carl Gustav Jung, another famous psychologist, a contemporary of Sigmund Freud, the canonical, the famous uh, uh, Austrian uh, psychoanalyst, Tari, a contemporary Carl Gustav Jung, a chatro, Swiss doctor, Professor Riklinev, Kache Galen Harje, uh, who told me. I don't want to discourage you, but you will never reach the end of your work, that you will never be able to finish your work. In your place, I will stop immediately. I did not stop. Perhaps we can say that uh, writing almost uh, becomes a way of therapy, almost transformed into a therapy, therapeutic writing. Uh, it, it almost becomes a device for therapy in case of Harje. And Harje's decision uh, not to abandon Tintin despite such expert advice had a direct parallel in the new adventure with Tintin's dogged insistence on rescuing Chang, whom everyone else believes to be dead. Captain Haddock, Tintin ke bollo tum jeo na, jao shombo bhi na, kikore jabe? Are you mad? The Tintin gallo. The dogged insistence on the part of the Tintin uh, can be interpreted as a dogged insistence on the part of that, uh, uh, on, on part of Harje himself. So it was a brave decision and perhaps a right decision. Although Harje was tempted to abandon Tintin at Rickling's suggestion, devoting himself instead to his hobby of the abstract art, he felt that doing so would be an acceptance of the failure. In the end, he left his wife so that he could marry Fanny Vanny and continued work on Tintin in Tibet, trusting that completing the book would exorcise the demons he felt possessed him. So it was a brave decision and a good one, said reporter and the British Tintin expert Michael Furr. Few problems, psychologically included, are solved by abandoning them. Thompson noted it was uh, ironic but not perhaps unpredictable that faced with the moral dilemma posed by Rickley Harje chose to keep his scout's word to honor to Tintin 
but not to German. So Belgian Indian expert Philip P. Corin summarized the entire thing by saying that Hardy sought to regain a lost equilibrium by writing uh, this uh, narrative uh, uh, Tibet Indian in Tibet. Perhaps Hardy tries to sought to regain a lost equilibrium that he imposes on his hero, a desire to seek purity. Considering it necessary for Tintin to go through the intimate experience of distress and loneliness and discover itself. So, writing Tintin in Tibet is almost a self discovery process, almost a process of self discovery, self examination. Nijeke Avishkar Koraje process, Tratuke, our Haje, Nijeke, Astakore, Kudevach, Tarigol, O Tintin in Tibet. So, uh, moving into another very important theme of the story is, of course, the foresight. What is foresight? Uh, in this most personal adventure, Harjay was able to indulge in two other personal interests, shared with Fanny, that actually fascinated him. First is the question of extrasensory perception. As I was saying, the Tintin Intimate is almost a, a, a spiritual narrative. And hence, it talks about extrasensory perception. What is extrasensory perception? It's a very important thing in Buddhism. Indriya gajjo padakthir bhaire. Indriya bhaire, amadar ponjo indriya bhaire. Je shashto indriya ache. Ba unnanna je shamusta amadar chintan kodhya tiya ache. Amadar chetona. Shri chetona ar madhame akdaraner mystic gyan arohon kora. Je ta amadar ponjo indriya madhame arohon kodhya bari na. At the same time, the influence of the mysticism of the Tibetan Buddhism uh, becomes very important in uh, the discussing Tintin in Tibet. So, foresight, aage theke dakha, dekhte pawa, shri khomo tata, jena Tintin ekane chang bolo chachi uche, he saw in his dream that chang is still alive, he did dekhi uche chachi uche, ebong eje buzde parar khomo tata, eja e extra sensory perception, dream sequences, nightmares, trauma, even the first thing, on a mature with a graphic narrative, we can see that in the first time, we can see that in the first time, we can see that in the first time. Of course, Cuthbert calculus in the first time, we can see that in the first time, we can see that in the first time, we can see that in various other Tinti narratives. But this sort of mysticism of the Tibetan Buddhism, we can see that in the first time. So, nodding off uh, while playing chase with the captain, Tintin has a frightful vision of the Chang, uh, as you can see in this particular uh, comic panel. A nightmare matching those that Harjay was suffering from. I'm terribly sorry, I must have dropped off. I had a horrible nightmare. Yes, I was dreaming about Chang. You remember Chang, the boy I met friends with in China. I saw him, it was costly. He was lying there, heart half bent by snow. He was holding out his hands and calling to me, "Help, Tintin, help!" It was all so terribly real. I'm still quite stunned by it. Tintin retires to bed early. The next morning, he appears for breakfast and reports, "No dreams, but not much sleep either. I was haunted by that picture of Chang lying in the snow, calling to me for help." Chang ya no shahat je jono hath bara te bolche Tintin ke je ta amra dekbo text for the gye. Shudh matro ei bish shashir kore bhar kore shudh matro ei four side je no kore ni bhar kore Tintin beriye porbe tar bundu ke baacha the. So this is not only a narrative of friendship, this is not only a narrative of companionship, of bondage, but also a narrative of four side of extra sensory perception. Bar bar bolchi indriyo gracho hathir baire chukhir baire. नाकेर बाई रे जैसे मुझे तो अमादर इंद्रियों थोड़ी अमर ज्ञान आरोहन पड़ी तार बाई रे को ना टेनी डिमेटिक स्पेस आचे पर टेनी मिस्टीरियस स्पेस जितना बाई रे होता ज्ञान आरोहन पड़ा संभव किचु एक टाचे जितना अमादर के कांस्टेंट बोल चे जे ना चैंग बीच है चिंटी के बोल चे चैंग बीच है तो ए जे एक � और एक टाइ तीन तीन इनकी बैठ के उन नानो ग्राफिक नैरेटिव उन टानो तीन तीन नैरेटिव थे के आला दा कुछ इट क्रिएट्स अ डिफरेंट स्पेस फॉर तीन तीन इनकी बैठ एस आई ऑलरेडी डिस्कस विद यू अबाउट द इश्यूज ऑफ द मैरिज पर्सनल साइकोलॉजिकल क्राइसिस द कॉन्फ्लिक्ट 
between his boy scout ethic along with his uh, 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 failed married life as i've said that in 1956 uh, he realized that he had fallen out of love with jarmaine and by 1958 he and fanny vaming a developed relationship so uh, who is a girl almost 28 years younger than him so all this crisis Hajj uh, went to uh, the psychologist uh, professor Rickley. so all these things uh, uh, have uh, perhaps uh, helped Hajj in creating uh, his white mythology at home at a white space patar por pata himalay ni lekha cholche kono changer kono kono dhoroner sign ma chinno matro nei ta shotto tar journey ta continue korche ei je continuation for the journey yes almost uh, it becomes a sort of spiritual journey all these things actually makes tintin uh, in tibet uh, a different sort of text now let us have a look into the characters in uh, tintin in tibet of course there is tintin there is snowy there is captain haddock there is kathbert calculus and there is chang chong chen who is actually a real life friend of rj there are uh, three uh, guide guides or uh, three sherpas and they are ching likin chang lin ye and thaki of course there is the character of yeti and there are other characters both these characters like there are blessed lightning shining light lob sang grand abbot and other characters like pinkin's young arab, arab friend abdullah wang chen ye and nestor has been mentioned in this text so this is a brief character sketch a brief description of the characters who appeared in tintin in tibet now we'll talk about uh jang chongrin uh who is actually the real life inspiration behind the creation of the character of the chang first created in the blue lotus neel komol banglate nirendra chakraborty translation e apothom created by chang bole character t who is who was basically a chinese sculptor best remembered in europe as the friend of harje the two met when chang was an art student in brussels harje was also a student of art in brussels and they make uh, they developed a uh, deep friendship with one another so jang chongren this is the original uh, jang chongren uh, and this is uh, uh, the statue of the jang chongren and this is uh, the jang uh, the chang created by harje in the blue lotus so now let us have a discussion on the a brief summary of the text after giving you the summary of the text i'll move into directly into uh, reading the text so let us uh, have a look into the summary of the text at first while on a holiday at a resort in the french alps with snowy captain haddock and professor calculus tintin reads about a plane crash in the gosen than massif massif is actually a collection of many mountains onik gulo boro boro pahar jokhon ekshonge ekta jaga dekha jeta ke massif bola hoy m a s s i f massif so tintin uh, uh, and captain haddock and professor calculus uh, is actually spending a holiday in a resort in the french alps uh, and uh, tintin uh, there heard about the news of the plane crash there so he then has a vision of his friend chang chong che and a uh, badly injured and calling for help from the wreckage of the crashed plane convinced of the chang survival tintin flies to kathmandu so con convinced about the survival of his friend tintin decides to fly to kathmandu via delhi so this is also very important text uh, for us because for the first time in any tintin narrative uh, india actually becomes a setting of the novel delhi though it's a very negative representation we can see uh, how tintin is almost missing his flight because of a uh, cattle because of a cow sitting in the road but delhi uh, though he is being represented in a very negative light but tintin in tibet gained a lot of uh, reputation and this is the uh, this is the only novel where uh, the name of india can be found so they hired a sherpa named thakke and accompanied by the porters they travel 
overland from Nepal towards the craft site. Here are the two images from the uh, from the comic. What a glorious holiday a snowy uh, through which the uh, uh, the comic started, and snowy saying, "Call this a holiday, a chute." scrambling over jagged rocks from morning till night I'm just scrambling over the jagged rocks from morning to night and you are calling this a holiday shooting all right for him with his heavy climbing boots it's fine with his uh, heavy climbing boots but I am completely uh, without any form of boots but if this goes on I'll have no paws left after returning into the hotel it's been a long day I'm not uh, sorry to be back at the hotel. I'm hungry as a hunter. And there he reads this disastrous news: Nepal air disaster, Kathmandu. And uh, and he said, uh, uh, and he even said, "Poor oh, devils! What a dreaded, dreadful place for a crash. They wouldn't stand a chance of surviving up there." And Harav is saying, "And that's what uh, your beautiful mountains do for you. And that's what your beautiful mountains do for you." beautiful mountain then dong the gong for dinner come on i'm famished so had up then went on for dinner and uh there they discovered the uh, 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 tin dreams about the chang uh, uh, after doing the dinner so as i've said uh, that they travel to uh, from Nepal to uh, from Kathmandu to the Tibetan Himalayas, and they hire a Sherpa named Tharke, and accompanied by the porters, they travel overland from Nepal towards the crash site. And the porters abandon the group in fear when mysterious tracks are found. While Tintin, Haddock, and Tharke go on and eventually reach the crash site. So this is not only a tale of friendship; this is also a tale of odds and obstacles badha ebong bipotti golpo eta jekhane purapuri porter the group the group will ab eventually abandon team team and head up when various mysterious footprints of uh, the yeti uh, has been found and team team sets off with snowy to trace chang steps and finds a cave where chang has carved his name on a rock on leaving the cave, he encounters a snowstorm and glimpses what seems to be a human shilhout. Almost a human shilhout. Shilhout means chaya. And Tharke believes that Tintin saw the Yeti and convinces him to abandon his friend and return with him to Nepal since the area is too large to search. Tharke said that this area is too large to search. It's almost impossible to, uh, uh, to find out uh, Chang in this situation. So please return to Nepal and uh, you have seen the shit out of EAT perhaps. Tintin spots a scarf on the cliff face and concludes that Chang is nearby and continues with only the captain. So Tintin spotted a scarf at the at Rumal Pelo, cliff face, the face of the cliff. Cliff means uh, uh, cliff anger was a film. Cliff means a uh, uh, high ranged mountain. Uh, uh, mountain is a very good thing. It is a very good thing. It is a very good So, while attempting to scale the uh, cliff face, Haddock sleeps and hangs out of reach, impaling Tintin, who is tied to him. Uh, uh, I am talking about this particular scene. This is a famous scene uh, in Tintin in Tibet. And this particular scene actually showcases Tintin's uh, 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 Tintin's love for Haddock, Haddock's love for Tintin, and uh, it actually talks about a tremendous uh, camaraderie, a tremendous companionship between the between the two. So he tells Tintin to cut the rope to save himself, but Tintin refuses, and Haddock tries to cut himself, but drops his knife at Tintin Tharke, who has returned in time to rescue them. They try to camp for the night. But lose their tent and must trek onwards, unable to see. And Tharke also returned in this moment. So this is not only a, 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 a tale of friendship. Only uh, 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 it not only tells the uh, dynamics of friendship between Tintin and Hannah, but also it incorporates Tharke. 
who, uh, who uh, actually didn't know Tintin personally before this journey. So they try to camp for the night but lose their tent and must trick onwards, unable to sleep lest they freeze, arriving within the site of the Buddhist monastery of Khorbiyong, Khorbiyong's Buddhist monastery where uh, Tintin will stay for the night before being caught in an avalanche. Uh, there Tintin meets uh, the Blessed Lightning who was a monk, not only a monk but also uh, a sort of uh, spiritual clairvoyante. Clairvoyante means who can uh, see, uh, who can visualize through various dreams, who, uh, who can, uh, can spiritually visualize the future. So, Blessed Lightning, a monk at the monastery, has a vision of Tintin's snowy haddock and Tarte in danger. And Tintin regains consciousness uh, and too weak to walk in the monastery. Uh, he gives Snowy a note to deliver and Snowy runs to the monastery, loses the message but is recognized as the dog from the Blessed Lightning's vision. Blessed Lightning recognizes Snowy uh, as the dog whom he sees in, the, in his vision, in his dream. Tintin, Haddock and Tharke regain consciousness in the monastery and are brought before the Grand Abbot. Uh, Kartsi to the Snowy, Snowy Nathakle. ও যেতে পারতো ব্লেসড লাইটিং এর যেতে পারতো না এবং কোনো ভাবেই টিন টিন দের কে রিগেন করা যেত না এই হিমালয়ান গসেনথন ম্যাসিভে তাদের শরীর সমাধি করতে বাট দ্য অ্যাবট টেলস টিন টিন টু অ্যাবান্ডন হিজ কোয়েস্ট বাট ব্লেসড লাইটিং হ্যাজ অ্যানাদার ভিশন থ্রু হুইচ টিন টিন লার্নস দ্যাট চ্যাং ইজ স্টিল অ্যালাইভ ইনসাইড এ মাউন্টেন কেভ অ্যাট দ্য হর্ন অফ দ্য ইয়াক এন্ড দ্যাট দ্য ইয়েটি is also there. So Horn of the Yak is a particular name of a place because it looks like the Horn of Yak. And Tintin uh, and the Blessed Lightning said that uh, he can visualize that uh, Chang is there, still alive inside that mountain cave. Tintin and Haddock travel on the Horn of the Yak. They arrive at a cave. Tintin ventures inside and finds Chang who is feverish and shaking the Yeti suddenly appears, revealed as a large anthropoid, reacting with anger at Tintin's attempt to take Chang. As it lunges at Tintin, the flash bulb of Tintin's camera goes off. So at this, at this very important moment, the flash bulb actually flashes of Tintin's camera and it scares the Yeti away. Chang tells Tintin that the Yeti saved his life after the crash. Perhaps Yeti also uh, felt a kind of friendship with Chang. And upon returning to inhabited lands, the friends are surprised to be met by the Grand Abbot. They have returned. They met the Grand Abbot, who presents Tintin with a khata scarf in honor of the bravery he has shown for his friend Chang. As the party travels home, Chang muses that Yeti is not a wild animal, but has a human soul. The Yeti sadly watches their departure from a distance. So, uh, on this part, Yeti uh, has been attributed some of the human qualities in this narrative. And Yeti sadly watches their departure from a distance. So, Tintin in Tibet is a different tale from other Tintin narrative. Here, there is no such great villain. Here, there is no such great antagonist like Rastapopoulos. This is not a political or socio-political commentary, not a political narrative, not at all a social satire. This is only a tale of friendship, of companionship. Uh, the imagery of the white abounds through the entire text. This is a tale of the bonding between Tintin and Captain Haddock, between uh, Tintin and Chang, and of course, uh, uh, the bond. it also talks about the bond between Yeti and the Chang. So this is a, a sort of spiritual, almost a spiritual tale of friendship. So we will uh, discuss about these themes, the story of the friendship, about uh, uh, the various other symbols. We will try to critically analyze Tintin, but let at first begin our textual analysis of Tintin. So in the next class, I will read with you uh, Tintin in Tibet, the text of the Tintin in Tibet. It will be, I think, a very... Uh, 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 attractive as well as a very fascinating experience for you. So thank you. See you in the next class. Bye.